Thank you, Roy. Thank you. Right, welcome, everyone, and uh, welcome to all those online. Uh, as you will have noticed, uh, Chairman Dave is um, not with us today. He's an apology, so you have me, the Deputy Chair. But before you begin booing and throwing your popcorn at the screen, I can assure you today's meeting will be full of the normal drama, intrigue, plot twists you come to associate with a SS and infrastructure meeting. Uh, we'll now call on uh, Councillor Duncan to read the council prayer in sulky tones. Thank you. Almighty God, as members of the Rangitiki District Council, we give thanks for all the good things of our district and the advantages we enjoy. We pray that you will give us wisdom and guidance as we conduct the affairs of this meeting. We pray for all the communities and the district we represent. Help us to be fair and honest in our discussions and help us to work together in unity for the welfare of all your people. Amen. Thank you, Councillor Duncan. Um, moving on, uh, public forum. I haven't been advised public forum. I'm assuming it's not one. Conflict of interest declarations. As we are all aware now, they can be made now or at due course during the meeting should they occur. Oh, sorry, yes, a mover for the apology. Oh, oh sorry, apologies, Councillor Wilson and Councillor Carter. Happy to move. Yeah, definitely. Uh, His Worship the Mayor and Councillor Moore. Um, where was it? Oh, confirmation of order of business. It's all the same, video. Confirmation of minutes of the previous meeting. And we'll get a chance to glance through them. Is there anything I myself couldn't find anything um, untoward? Anyone working their way down through the pages? I kept feeling as though there was had to have been another meeting that the thing that February was a long time ago. Yeah, but, uh, but the rest, I believe, was covered in, in workshops. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yep, yeah, if there's no matters arising. No, everyone's not oh, good. Okay, I'll, I'll move that they are a true and accurate record of the meeting. Seconder, yeah. Councillor Duncan. Um, All those in favour? Uh, Against? Carried. Right. Um, follow up actions from the previous meeting. Uh, we looked like um, Arno is going to be multitasking on this one. <laughs> Is there any uh, follow-up actions from the, your, uh, your worship? Um, yes, item number. <coughs> excuse me, item number one. Investigate whether we can provide a list of slips. I notice it's closed. Um, I had asked for this because I wasn't sure that the forty would be the entire number of underslips, etc. And I still would probably suspect that is the case. Uh, I find no reference, for example, um, by, for the dropout on the Mount Cool that has been there for a very long time, where it, it has eaten into the pavement and there is a um, down to virtually a one lane piece up on the Mount Cool. So I find, and I am sure there are others, to be honest. I don't believe that that we have a complete list, and that's indicative of of our asset management out to this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, to sort of apply on that, I think uh, we just have to distinguish also between the slips that was caused in those rain events and slips that were caused just due to normal rain and other things. Mm -hmm. So I agree with His Worship. I think the list is longer than that, but I think that it lists specific to those events. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, can I reply yeah, to yeah. that? Regardless as to how an event happened, that is the state of our network. And if we disregard those those occurrences that have held for, uh, from other localised rain or whatever, the end result is they never go on a list to be repaired. And that's that's the important thing in terms of our network from my point of view. If I may yeah. reply, yeah. Uh, a, a good point. Uh, the question, though, was specific on that list of 40 that was created by that rain event. That's why that list is, will only include that, but they would know about all, all the others. Yeah. The other thing also, just remember, 
important to remember for all councillors to remind your constituents, request for service is so important for this. If it's, mm -hmm. if it's on the system, it can't disappear. But if people drive past and they don't let us know, it might take longer for us to even see. So that's really important mm -hmm. to use that. My, my understanding was that, for instance, the Mount Curl one was listed as a request for service. Uh, it was listed by um, the scows. No, we had two up our road as well that um, didn't appear on this, and they've been there for quite a while. So um, be obviously worth um, doing a request for service for them as well again, because one of them is actually... I'm slowly eating further and further in towards the bank as well. So yeah. so, yeah, it is important. I think Arno's right. I could advise your constituents to report them. And so then they're in the system. Otherwise, you, know, you can end up going from one lane to no lane very quickly. So just a question through you, Mr Chair. Would it be useful when you get into the new financial year to actually have a report, on a status report that enables that whole thing to be looked at as to how they'll be recorded going forward and not sort of reporting that we can look at? Because I think the point that um, this worship is trying to make is that the status of some of the, it's not only our rural district, but others, yeah. is deteriorating. And yeah. so how do you manage that? And how how are you able to advocate or lobby the government that this mm. is what's happening? So having a better record and being able to report on that is probably mm. something that we can look at yeah. in the yeah. financial year. I think, yeah, definitely with the, uh, God, the funding restrictions for roading, it's important we can front foot it. Yeah, like you say, and, and dealing with central government or whatever, just to you know, make them aware that, you know, that I don't think there's an easy solution. No. Either. I mean, that's the reality of it. Mm. I think as fast as you'll be fixing them, others will be occurring. Mm. So it's just going to be a part of the system. We're just going to have to manage as best we can. But, like, certainly, if I look at our road, like, they're both either side of me. I could quite easily be, um, like, even if you fixed one, if you could fix one, then the other could wait because well, it'd be quite easy. I could be left stranded um, with slips because you know it's, it's a through road, it's not an no exit one. So. Again, though, it's good for this committee to know that yeah. then. So even if some of these are longer because they are higher priorities, it's still good to know mm. that's the reason why and it's still on the list. So mm. I agree with, with uh, the CEO. I think better reporting on this is, yeah. is valuable. No, I couldn't agree more. Um, anything else? Yes, Councillor Duncan. Thank you. Number two, um, Otara Bridge. Uh, it says in here that there has been no change to the contract, um, and I'm just I just want to, to confirm that that's the case, given the delay. Um, and hopefully, there's not going to be any further delays. Can you give me confirmation? There's no no further delays, and whether that contract still as is. Yes, three was here. Yes, we can. Uh, so we've asked the question. It was one of the questions that came to us early in the week. Um, the due date is still the due date, uh, and there's no variation in the in the cost. It's still the cost. Thank you, uh, Council Alvin. There's two items three and four. Um, both have been closed, and both have been assigned um, numbers by Wakakotahi. Um, is there any follow up from Council? On those numbers and on that job request, um, and does Waka Kotahi <laughs> actually um, say when those jobs will be completed? Uh, three minutes. You know, uh, no, it's uh, it's similar to a request for service process that you submit these requests on, uh, and that's about it. So we'd have to follow up on those. Just regarding, uh, yes, just regarding um, four and the Great No Good Way sign um, in Tahapi, um the lo local type of community is quite concerned about that junction and the safety issues with that junction. Can I suggest that the council re ask Waka Katahi about that progress? Yeah, we can. Uh, Councillor Moore. Um, I'm going back to the Okara Bridge. Does that confirm that the 16th of May will be the completion date? With the reply we got last towards the end of last week, 16th is still the confirmed date. If something happens and it and it extends, we'll let you know. That's what we got. We've got a week. But I have to say through you, Mr. Chairman, that's what we were advised. We're we're trying to get as um as earlier of information of a change mm -hmm. of that. But as you know, that that is controlled by um, Manor Two. So we, all we can do is look at it and keep asking those questions. But 
this, you would hope that 16th isn't very far away. So if there was an extension, and what Arno is saying is that we, we, we would notify you as soon as practical, but we can't influence. Um, two, the first one with that bridge, you know, we are continuing it as councillors to get questions around the, the process of, of welding and making the bridge of some sort of rigid platform. Um, are we able to reply to say this was the design done and who it was done by? Because I think probably this is a question that routinely comes up. The question is, you are making that bridge into a rigid structure. It is a swing bridge. It is designed to flex, and this is why it is buckling. And having an answer to that, um, or or having checked in some process that that it had been looked at, would be useful in terms of community. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. There was another question that came through to us in the week. Um, the original design and upgrade that was done in 2018 was done by suitably qualified structural engineers from GHD. I understand that people would have a view on this, but in these things, we have to trust the experts. That's why we employ them, and this is mm. done by actual structural engineers, and, and that's where the trust is going to look. So we can say that mm -hmm. this was designed by a bridge expert working for GHD. Yeah. 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 yeah, it does seem a bit ironic. It is a swing bridge and it's going to be um, solid, but you can only go on one of the toes. Fingers crossed it, yeah. obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Duncan. Thank you. Just one more thing um, about the phone box. Um, I understand that it's... Uh, obstructing visibility but then what do we do about providing that sort of service to the community is it going to be shifted or is it actually going to be removed and what is the general trend of providing those sorts of old-fashioned uh, technology um, to the public is that changing are phone boxes disappearing around the country that's my question uh Interesting question. Uh, obviously, it's not our services, and we really don't know. Mm. Uh, and also for that specific part of State Highway 1, I don't know if they would want to remove it or not. I, I, we don't know. Thank you, I think. Councillor um, I'm not quite, This isn't in the follow-up actions, but I know it's been on the council table in the past. But it relates to... Um, 11 and um, getting across State Highway 1 pedestrian crossings um, and the Bulls situation. Um, Bulls has no crossings um, and the community is sort of cut in half basically because of State Highway 1. Um, has there been any initiative from Council to talk to Waka Katahi again about State Highway 1 through Bulls? Um, the answer is yes. I sit on the regional roading board, uh, so which is another portal into those things that affect uh, our district with regard to NZTA, Waka Kate. It's been raised a number of times. It's been referenced to as pitch points um, in the network, um, but specifically, I have raised on numerous occasions um, the difficulty about pedestrian access crossing State Highway 1. Um, and it has become noticeably worse with the new roundabout. So we are there are occasions when that has been backing up right through to bulls. Mm. Um, so there's a constant discussion. Well, so it is on the radar, which is good, but yeah, I don't know. Chairman, I'm not sure it's on the radar because no, the course, indication yeah. that we had was they're trying to clear everything off state oil and run. So, oh. so it's not, I don't think that you... Oh, no, I sort of took, uh, if, like, if, with the new roundabout, as Worship quite rightly pointed out, there is massive track of backup. So whether they're re looking at it as a consequence of that. Perhaps I like, should clarify, when I say on the radar, that doesn't mean that, that they are looking to change it. What I'm saying is that it is constantly being, I am asking the question. 
Mm -hmm. um, but any further information back to me or a, a what may well be useful is um, a recommendation from our council per se by way of a council position decision mm -hmm. to reinforce that would be useful. The difficulty of pedestrian access. Mm -hmm. It was um, designed for a refuge in the centre of the road. Mm. Um, and that's as far as they were prepared to look at. But that hasn't happened either. Mm. Thank you, Councillor Loudon. Well, just regarding that, like the um, Otaki and Lubin situations, um, they've solved the problem by bypassing those towns. And I know that there has been schemes before to go round bulls um, through State Highway 1? There hasn't been anything in the last 20 years. Yeah. That's how far back it goes. Mm -hmm. um, routinely, probably every two or three years, it, it would be a minimum. I would have gone on record as saying, you know, has, is there anything in the you know, 10 or 20 or 30 year plan to bypass bulls, the answer has been consistently no. Mm. Councillor Wong. The position of council to support the bypass of the road offered is good for that um have uh, economic effects on the on the town on the towns and I, I um because Tai Hippie is in the same um same um position and if they bypass it the um local economy would offer greatly. Mm. But in saying that is a serious pinnacle there, so yeah. I, I, and it's not meant for the next 20 years, so uh, I, I, I'd be curious to see what councils. This has been taken to the Bulls community in the past. Um, their, view, their view in the past has been that they do not want to bypass, mm -hmm. um, that there is nothing in, in the planning. I suspect at some stage in the future there will be a bypass. Mm -hmm. um, how that it would be very expensive for them to do. Mm. Um, we have, from periodically, from time to time, for instance, there have been opportunities that have been pointed out to NZTA, a number of properties around the intersection of State Highway 1, State Highway 3 came onto the market at exactly the same time. It was flagged to NZTA. They were on the market if they were looking at putting in a better roundabout or system there on a big scale, and they um, decided not to pursue that. Yeah, well, it's um, yeah, as long as it's on our radar, <laughs> it's it's all we can hope for. I know Hunterville's always been earmarked as a good traffic checkpoint on State Highway One. There's no desire to bypass Hunterville for that reason. It just slows, it takes the sting out of the traffic, especially with like, passing lanes. So. No doubt they, they look they look at the bigger picture. So yeah. Um anything else on follow up actions? Councillor Duncan? Just on that um I just have my two cents worth. Uh, I do travel that road fairly often and I do notice that the trucks take that um travelling south, they take the left hand turn before the actual C B D of Bulls and um whip round past Waka Kotari and probably would like to whip round a bit further. Um, not Waka Kaitari, but around um, Te Matapihi. Um, um, I wonder if that's something that council couldn't support, um, make it um, formalising that to get the trucks out of that central area. It might actually, you know, take a fair bit of traffic away, make it safer. Um, through you, yes. Chair, um, I have raised exactly that issue on numerous occasions as well. Um, the reality is that that section of road, first of all, is not designed for a state highway levels of traffic. Mm. And um, what we would be requesting is that it gets added to the state highway network, oh. including funding. Um, it is used principally because of the access turning uh, arc onto State Highway 1. Mm. Um, continuing on State Highway 1 and State Highway 3 intersection. Mm. But yeah, we are constantly asking for that. Um, I can suggest also that we write and thank NZTA 
because repeatedly we have raised the issue of the rail bridge um, State Highway 1 uh, out from Natawa Road, out mm -hmm. from Natawa School. And they're spending a lot of money there putting in pump stations and so on. And that is an issue that we have raised over years. And maybe it's a good tactical thing to thank them for that. Yep. Nothing further on follow up actions won't be captured later in the meeting. Oh, thank you. I'll move on from that. Yes. Those favour. Um, mover, sorry. Councillor Dowgetty, seconder. Councillor Duncan. All those in favour? Um, Against? No. Against. Gary. Um, right. Uh, chair's report. Um, yes, yeah, so I wasn't quite aware I was going to do a chair's report till I saw my name in the order paper. <laughs> but I've uh, just spoken briefly, just a very brief verbal one. Uh, Dave has mentioned, well, he followed it up with that email, but thanking all the councillors for putting questions in before the meeting. So uh, they can all be addressed. It certainly speeds the job up and makes um, staff's job a lot easier. And um, just uh, like in the course of the meeting, if, if we do, we'd like them all, all, all dealt with, obviously, during the meeting. So if we do drift off topic, don't be afraid to ask your question if it's not been covered. And the other thing I was going to mention was it was great to see the um, planning in place for the RDC procurement process for the PESMC model, et cetera. And it's great to have timelines in place for things like that. Especially because um, obviously the very busy assets and infrastructure never a dull moment. Things that are on the horizon as dots can be splattered across the windscreen very quickly. So it's just a matter of um, how we capture that the, the 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 milestones, the markers, and so they're kept in front of us so we don't drift off the pace and um, it makes sure we have all the staff in place and everything like that for the ongoing process. So that um, that was all I had in my very brief chair's report. Yeah. Oh, okay. And um, Arno can introduce his guest as well. Thank you uh, for that, Mr. Chair. Yeah, so this morning I thought I would make use of the opportunity to introduce councillors and specifically this committee uh, to Steve Kahn. So what we've done is we've engaged Steve to help us out in the PMO space uh, now that Adina has left. Uh, and what Steve brings to that space is a wealth of knowledge and experience specifically in this district. Uh, mostly across the three waters, but also project management in general, but also some other skills that I think would be super valuable to us as a council um, in the national three water space, uh, where that might be going, what that might look like. Uh, so I thought I would just give Steve the opportunity to introduce himself and, uh, and you can all know who he is and where he fits in. Thanks, Anna. Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, it's great to be here. I, I just hit the deck here yesterday, so uh, just getting up to speed. On, on a number of uh, projects um, council has on its books at the moment. So just a bit of my backstory. Um, I got yeah, I, I might not sound like it, and people have asked me recently, when did you get off the plane? But um, uh, I've got a long sort of association and track record in the, in the region here. Um, going back to my wife is um, from over Woodville Way and her family's long five generation people over there. So on the, uh, with a tree nurse, a big tree, Murray's nurseries over there. So we married in Palmy in 1992. So lived in Australia up until 2000. I worked for GHD as a graduate starting in 1989 uh, in Melbourne. And uh, we moved over to Palmy in the year 2000. I uh, happened to uh, my move over to New Zealand was coincided with when GHD established its operations in New Zealand and uh, I used to work the first 18 months of my time in New Zealand. I worked um, with Roger Coles in the office just up the road here when GHD had that contract. I was mostly mostly roading network maintenance, which wasn't my cup of tea. So I sort of built up our water business, water, wastewater, stormwater business um, uh, from that from that point. And first 18 months, as I say, was uh, was here in Martin. I worked, I lived in Palmy, but come up here and... Um, I uh, got to know a lot of the assets in the in the district and the systems and the networks. And, uh, yeah, I was just looking through a couple of projects that are on the books at the moment, and I saw what I thought looked like stage six of a project that the Thai Happy Raw Water Intake Main, I, I suspect I was worked on stage one in about 2001 or <laughs> so. Um, some of these are long, you know, we all talk about long-term um, asset lives and asset <laughs> and projects, so... You know that's uh, that's a tricky one. That one, just given where that pipeline is actually located, um, it's pretty um, 
rough country uh, up, you know, upstream from from the town. So, uh, you know, have have number of projects I've worked on at Bulls at the water treatment plant, a lot of network analysis stuff here in in Martin, and some some other works at at Ty Happy and Hunnaville. But uh, being based in Palmy for seven years, I established GHC's office in Palmerston North, and that's grown now. It's a permanent office. You know, it was a bit of a, it was pretty. Um, a run on the smell of an oily rag when we established it, but uh, back in 2001. But um, that's obviously a mature office now. I um, moved to Auckland in 2007. Uh, not your typical Jaffa, but I you know, hope. Um, <laughs> certainly done a lot of work in the district in the period since. And um, uh, some of that work was over at Wanganui District, and that's where I got to know got to know Anu and his time over there. So uh, I led GHD, I grew and led GHD's water business nationally up until uh, 2019. So I've got quite a perspective on what's going on around the country and also across the ditch as well in the water industry. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that's some stuff where it's relevant. And I'm very much a horses for courses type approach and I'm very mindful uh, just reflecting on my own experience of working here in the region for seven years and then moving up to Auckland and just how different approaches are necessary and appropriate in different parts of New Zealand. In terms of you know fit for purpose solutions versus um, Rolls Royces and things like that. So um, yeah, don't don't think that I'm going to apply an Auckland solution uh, to anything I, I look at here because it's just understand that the world doesn't work like that. So um, affordability is, is key, and um, so uh, that's part of a sort of practical, pragmatic approach to it. But also mindful, you know, I I, I left GHD in 2019 after 30 years with the organisation. Uh, just sort of a bit over the big corporate stuff, and uh, I've set up set up very recently my own consultancy. Uh, it's really focused in the water sector, and providing a mainly front end strategic advisory stuff, um, master planning, and strategy stuff. I'm not doing any detailed design work as such, but or construction management work, but um, uh, it can certainly provide guidance and input for people that do that work. So. Uh, I know it's got me on board here for a while. I uh, appreciate, you know, there's a potentially changing environment out there in the three waters. Mm -hmm. Be careful how I say three waters, but across stormwater, wastewater and water supply. Um, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, just I do whatever I can based on the knowledge I have and, you know, a view over the fence in other districts as well in the region, doing work for Wanganui at the moment, hopefully some work for the city in Palmerston North very shortly, but... Tauranga and um, and for other consultancies up in Auckland, you know, bring some of that breadth of experience mm -hmm. and perception as to other things that are going on around the place where it's beneficial to to Rangitiki District. So, um, yeah, a part time role for a while here. We're not quite sure, you know, how that might play out uh, time wise, but mm -hmm. I'm flexible and um, uh, yeah, you know, just hope I can really add some value. And you know, I've done the consultancy thing for a long time, so feel very comfortable challenging your incumbent suppliers uh, where it's necessary that they be challenged, both from a technical point of view and, and also a, um, a delivery timeline sort of point of view as well. So it's part of what I do. So, um, yeah, that's that's another facet of, of, of the role I can play here. Uh, I still, whilst I did a lot of management, sort of business leadership, business development stuff at GHD, I very much maintain technical competency in a few key areas. And you know it's it's uh, it's part of the authenticity thing for me. Um, people need to see that you're actually doing something of value to the organisation rather than just being some um, salesman at the front. So uh, that's the way I operate. So um, I look forward to what I can do here mm -hmm. and uh, working with people and and getting Peter up to speed on on things and and you know and the and the changeover from you know the shared services arrangement member two and and you know, what how, how that's managed within Rangitiki. Uh, going forward and the transfer of that those, that sort of stuff over and you know very, very much uh, hopefully add some real value and, and smooth those um smooth those pathways in in the near term anyway so no, thank you. i'm happy you know take some questions or whatever I, yeah whatever i'm, I'm here yeah. so no there's yeah, no time we'll, we'll, for any questions you wish um first of all thank you and i was aware of um i date back to the days of roger Collins yeah yeah, yeah well gotcha yeah yeah well it's interesting coming over here from melbourne and landing in martin yeah, it was quite a cultural shock for me and <laughs> being a 32 year old australian um there's all sorts of acceptance issues there in those days but that's fine <laughs> anyway yeah. this isn't probably for a discussion at the moment but we have had an offer of uh, an alternative water source um for Thai happy 
and I wouldn't like to see just it's not for discussion today, but I wouldn't like to see that offer not being um, understood um, in the future. So, um, uh, and I'm not prepared to talk about who it's come from or where it's come from, but um, mm. it is something that I would like to see followed up. Yeah, well, the location of the source at the moment is a pretty tricky place to mm. get to. I remember going up there in a helicopter with some of Arno's predecessors, and it was a pretty remote site, mm. and you know, access and maintenance and all that sort of stuff's quite tricky with the intake up there in the hills. So, um, yeah. You mean the, our existing use now or this possible offer? No, the existing intake. Mm. I know how remote it is and that creates issues in terms of maintenance and access and longevity of it and all that sort of stuff. So okay. we're going to understand what you're thinking of it. I'll turn it off. Councillor Loudon. I'm Simon Loudon, first term councillor Mark. Um, yeah, just like to say that Actually, Martin comes from Melbourne and, and the alphabet. Um, <laughs> but um, I'd just like to say a very warm welcome. Thank you. Mm. That's not, yeah. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, he, that, yeah. That's a good point. Should we go around the room and introduce ourselves? <laughs> um, the, um, since here. I'm uh, Deputy Chair of Assets and Infrastructure, Dave's away today, Richard Lambert, Second Term Councillor, Central Ward. Simon, you've met. Joel Duncan. Um, second term, um, tie happy basically, um, Northern Water. Yep. Yeah. Well, great. Great morning, Central World Ward, first term councillor. Pete Albetty, Central World, and live in Hunterville, um, and chair of finance, and very excited to have you on board. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeff Wong, um, first term councillor, Northern Ward, so I live in Tai happy and um, Deputy to fee on the Finance Committee. Yeah, Andy Watson, Mayor of the Rangatake, um, wants to be the Councillor Mayor, it's me. Um, yeah, you, you, you'll remember all our names by the time we... Yeah, 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 no, no, that's all good, that's all good. So uh, I hope the ties haven't been pumped up too high by Anno, but um, we'll do our very best. I'm quite looking forward to what we can do here. Okay, Thank so you. you have a question? Oh, no, I think I'll... I, think I'll I have a quick question. Yeah, yeah. So um, when you said you're here for short term, is, it, is that a short term contract? Or... Oh, uh, we're talking three months or so at the moment, but look, I'm hoping, yeah, it depends on how the whole sort of um, theme grows and evolves. And my role is not to uh, do existing staff members' jobs, but to uh, help them do their jobs and support them and guide them and that sort of stuff, mentoring and all that sort of with process and also technical, the actual engineering technical bits of it, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to challenge some of the, you know, oh, no, good. some of the, um, uh, you know, the, some of the sort of technical solutions that are flowing around the place and the actual designs and the concepts and strategies for sort of connecting A and B and all that sort of stuff, whether, you know, have we actually thought about this or that, that sort of questions. Right. Okay, yeah, so so certainly so... the last person we had short term was signed on for a couple of years. So. <laughs> well, yeah. it's funny you should, it's funny you should <laughs> say that. When we moved over from Melbourne, because our kids were babies at that point, my wife wanted to sort of family support. She's one of eight. Um, and uh, we said, oh, we'll come over for two or three years. Yeah. <laughs> that was 25 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I was going to say, no, um, exactly what Greg said. You'll find, uh, well, as you're well aware, Auckland's very different from the Rangitake and yeah, short term here is sort of five, ten years. I don't think I've taken this either, Steve, that I'm a planner actually yet. So planners and engineers don't get on anyway. Oh, good, good. <laughs> no, no, in the old days they didn't, but those days. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm still in the old days. Respecting yeah. each other's, uh, <laughs> yeah. they value each other. Yeah. Having different viewpoints, but mm. yeah. Yeah. no, no, that's always good. No, a bit of healthy debate never hurts. Um, in, in any pro project, so no, it's good to have you on board. Yeah, no, thank you. You're welcome, and uh, look forward to uh, you know, for me, it's you know, let's do some good stuff and yeah. very pragmatic, though. And um, you know, you won't get it all on solution, you know, on solution, that's for sure. So, what's appropriate for you? Okay, no, thank, thank you for that. Right, um, my uh, short chair's report, which actually ended up a bit prolonged, um, I'll, I'll move it, uh, be received, second to Councillor Morn. All those in favour, against, I uh, carry. Well, thank you. Right, moving on to reports for information. Um, once again, Arno's um, uh, led us through this, I believe. That's correct. Thank you, Mr Chair. <clears throat> and I think, if I may, uh, I'll start with the questions that came in via email. And again, I would like to reiterate, I, I think it's really valuable. Uh, 
this time around we got them by the Tuesday, so that gives us enough time to have a look and see if we can get all the answers together. Uh, we just need to kind of think about a process, and uh, what I would suggest is I'll, I'll quickly step through them and give you a verbal because it might generate more discussion, mm. and then I will send them out via email to all councillors afterwards so you can have a good look at the more detailed answer. Uh, and again, in the future, remember this, it works really well. Uh, and uh, and I think we should do more of it. So we'll yes. start off with uh, Councillor Morn had some questions. The first one was the Calico Line walkway. Um, if it's, you know, what is the cost estimate? Uh, is there any change in it? There was quite a bit more work than, than what originally was uh, envisaged. What that really is, <clears throat> is we found that a lot of those property owners were actually using some of the berm space and we had to negotiate them to move the fences back to where they should actually be, so on the property boundaries. Uh, but to be honest, the property owners uh, are quite comfortable with that. We didn't have any issues with that. The re reply I got from the roading team is that <clears throat> the cost estimate is still $300,000 mm -hmm. um, with contingencies, but they say with all of the additional stuff, it will close. It will be it will be a, a tight squeeze, but it is still 300000 and that's what's in the budget. Well, um, who pays for the cost of the boundary realignments? Um, well, I the boundaries there, obviously, but who's the infrastructure? Because you know, I know people who live on Calico Line, and there's gardens that have to be moved back, fences, you know, entrance ways, blah blah blah. Uh, who covers all that cost. I think the shifting of the fencing is covered by us, uh, but I don't think there's any anything else. Uh, it's just the fences. We'll just move the fence back, and then we'll construct uh, the pathway. Can I ask why? Is it a cost for council? Because uh, the landowner's fence is on council land. That's right, through you, Mr. Chair. It's a, it's, a, it's a good question, but a very tricky one on the ground. Uh, some of these people have been using their land for many, many, many years. And for some of them, it's quite a surprise when we yeah. knock on the door and say, your fence is, is on the road reserve. So what happens is we can start a lengthy process of of saying you should pay to move your fence, but that will delay the project potentially by years for a very small financial gain. Or we can say to them, you need to shift it. We are prepared to pay the couple of thousand dollars to move your fence uh, and we can move on with things. I think that really is the, is the problem, is the, is the delay that it might cause for the small financial benefit of moving that fence. Um. It's a legal obligation that they should put the fence on the boundary. So uh, I'm open. If councillors want us to make them pay, we can go down that route, but I must just raise the flag and say expect long delays. And perhaps mm -hmm. through you, in my experience, that's not quite how it's, you know, sometimes it pans out because sometimes they have approached the council, either formally mm -hmm. or through um, staff. This is historically. So this could be, I don't know, 25 years ago or more. Mm -hmm. And they've got a tacit agreement that they could go on there. So it is, it's a bit mm -hmm. what um, Arno is saying, in my view, you've got to balance some of that up, you know, as to dealing with that, as to whether you want to go through that process or not. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to be tripped up when we can come out with a, a letter, you know, handwritten letter that yeah. gives them permission to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I totally understand is just... Technically, you're right. Councillor Moore? I'm... I'm comfortable that we reinstate their fences as, as long as it's sort of within the budget. You know, we've set the budget. But I think most of us thought it was just a matter of putting a shell rock along the side of Calico Line and putting a few culverts in on the existing verge. <coughs> I didn't actually realise that we had another two or three metres that we could claim right along that side of the road. Yeah, we're sure that that makes the budget. Um, I absolutely support uh, Arno's position. We should fund. We should fund us. There are numerous instances of where council has entered into arrangements, knowing that the boundary, because it saves us on maintenance. There have been a lot of rural roads where um, you know, we have said we are happier with you actually moving. With Fencing positions. So it's quite common. Councillor Duncan. 
Um, it it um, sorry, it occurs to me there's an opportunity then also if council is paying for the fencing to have some sort of uniformity, which actually could make it more attractive. Um, that's just an idea. Um, yeah, no. Oh, hey, Councillor Algeti? Well, I was certainly, um, I think the scope is different from what I initially envisioned, but I, I think it's going to be very exciting if if we can put in what will be a significant walkway um, there. I think that it's going to be really a great welcome to our town and, and great for, for the community. Um, just interested, where does it sit in our LTP time-wise, please? Uh, it's not in the new LTP because it is in this financial year. It's un but or, or uh, unsubsidized works in this budget. So, so do we get it completed within that un an unsubsidized budget? If we don't get it completed, it will carry over from this year. So it's not in the it's not in the long term plan. Thank you. It's, it's in the current. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, just to make councillors aware. We tend to often think of a boundary between two parties. You have an equal decision to, to fund this uh, in terms of fencing. That does not apply to road reserve. So when these fences were put up, they would have been put up at the cost of the of the, the farmer or landowner, whereas council would not have contributed to it under uh, their it's, it's an exemption process. So um, they will have funded these these fences once themselves, mm. not subsidised. Okay, that's good. All right, moving on. Thank you. Yeah, the second question from Councillor Morn was uh, with regards to solar farms, uh, an update on solar farms. Mm -hmm. And I think if I may invite His Worship to give us an update, I think I think May Andy probably knows more in this place than, than I can update. What I can say is most of it is still confidential because it's in the planning phase. Uh, and there's only been one that's that's been approved. So, but I would invite his worship to give us. Um, yeah, we rather than go into a lot of detail, around, there has been one approved. It's um, twenty eight or thirty eight hectares. Twenty eight, I think. Um, and that has been that has gone through our process of consenting. Um, and you're talking, you know, the Pocky Path of Wales line area. There are a number of others that we know are in pipelines. Some of those pipelines involve council. Some of them, some of them have gone down the fast track method, um, which are independent to our process, even as a decision maker. But we will still need to provide reports to the fast track process. Um, but potentially, we have very significant areas around <coughs> Martin that could be part of um, solar farms. I wondered how I was going to introduce this topic, but um, <laughs> at, at the last lot of workshops, we did talk about bringing a report to the policy and planning about resource consents, plan changes, district plan, you know, building consents, <laughs> those sort of things in a report form so that they you were getting a regular update, because sometimes I do feel that things are happening in here that you probably aren't up to date mm. with that happen, and that's not because of any particular reason, but you're not up to date with what had happened. Mm. Um, I do think this particular one did come through a CE's report just for noting, so there was no opportunity to discuss it. But my the feedback that I was given was through that workshop, it wasn't something that was necessarily favoured. So I've had a discussion this morning as to whether... Um, that would be useful to the council coming through in a form that could be debated maybe every couple of months or whatever it is. But I think it's worthwhile trying for some of the reasons that you've raised around here is that it does give you a snapshot as to what's happening and gives you the mm. opportunity to ask some of those questions, whereas otherwise you've got to trigger them yourselves or we've got to remember to put them through the CE mm. report. So my understanding at the moment that it was a lukewarm response to that. So. I wondered how I was going to introduce that. So that's a perfect question. <laughs> segment, beautiful. Yes, well, um, the only reason I asked is, you know, it's all through the community, yeah. and you get asked oh, about, yeah. you know, oh, actually, we haven't heard much about the solar farms yeah. at all, apart from they may be happening. 
and yeah, we're getting more information from the public, well, I am, <laughs> than I am from <clears throat> a council that I'm sitting on as a councillor. I think that's... Uh, I think you know. I, I think it should be really. Yeah, I, I think your idea is a very good one. We, uh, even though we could, did get a lukewarm response, maybe just needed a, the gas going up. Well, Max, well, I think we'll try it anyway. Yeah, because um, it, it certainly ties in with what I was talking about with the procurement thing, like things like that. Th these can start getting developed outside our knowledge. Yeah, the farms, and so it's always good. To, it it uh, touches on what you said. You'll be getting more information regarding them. Any any developments like that, regular. <coughs> And, and of course, it's all public knowledge to us because once it's in, it's in the public arena. So we, there's no reason why we can't tell you. It's not like some of this is confidential. Mm. Uh, oh, just, oh, just one more comment. And it was an article that me and Andy was quoted in about the fast track approach, you know, through yeah. and then the council approach. So some have gone through, but we have an input into that fast track approach as far as mm. consenting and stuff goes. And other questions I get about land use class of land use, I'm guessing that because it's energy, that's um, yeah, well, not that's... tied up in the... Well, this would be a good one topic to have point. as one of those policy ones because it does appear that one trumps the other, which is, well, I think Mary Andy and I have had many conversations about this as to how can you have conflict and... Um, national policy statements, but mm. that's that, that again is a good topic to have in here so that you can then answer. Yeah, um, yeah just in terms of process, there are difficulties when stuff is known out in the community, but it's, if somebody lodges a consent with council, that is their business, and council has to go through a process around <coughs> deciding who has the right to be notified um, in terms of full notification, limited notification, um, or uh, in the case of this particular consent, I understand that, that they approached neighbours and there was a neighbour sign-off, which, <coughs> which is quite an acceptable process in itself. Um, that, that decision part is still in confidence. And the issue is that often the people lodging that consents with our consenting department tell all and sundry not around right. what they're doing, but that still does not give us the right to disclose an application per se. And that's where it often becomes muddy. It wasn't about disclosing applications or anything like that. It was just general knowledge yeah. about the process. Right? I need to and check that one out because once, once they've lodged an application... application in the public arena, that is discoverable and can be notified. So we just, and I, I think the point is valid is what we're talking about is it gives you that information mm. as soon as we can, which can mm. open those debates. Mm. It keeps us abreast of you, uh, Council now. Oh, just a curiosity, um, with a, a hackier base close by and the fly zone through and around the Rangitiki, would something like a solar farm trigger engagement with Ohakia in, in our processes? I, I think it's to do with heights and flight paths, but um, I think it does trigger, but it's more to do with heights rather than anything else. So things like glare and... and well, well, not not sure, of that, but that's one of the yeah. things that would have well, to be taken. I walking on a beautiful day, and, and there were mm. several of these planters around the country, so that and, would have and to... there were quite... It was early morning flight, and, yep. and glare often was, was quite... So any assessment mm. would have to take that into account. So I think that is a by whoever's doing it through. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> now we have a number of applications and interests around solar farms. We've also got <clears throat> applications and interests around wind farms, for example, and you know, <coughs> glare and reflection of turbine blades. Um, I know has been raised on a number of occasions in the past. So the answer is yes. It's all good, right? Next one, Arno. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, we'll move on. So, <laughs> Councillor Wong had a question uh, with regards to the remainder of the shared services. Um, and one of those services would either continue or will have to change. And I thought probably the best is just a verbal update. Carol, if you could help. Sure. Um, so, the, the shared services, is only the services is only impacting on the waters and the roading. 
So the environmental health function <coughs> that NDC supply to us and us supply the animal control function mm. still continues as it is. So it's only the waters and the roading that's had any impact. And the other two are under different agreements anyway. They're not tied up with that original shared service agreement. Mm. Yeah. And if if I may just add, so those services will come back to RDC and will be supplied yeah. by the <coughs> from 1st of July. Okay. Can I just ask on that? I've I've got another question, but the, um, so that is in the public arena, the, that uh, 31st of June, that, that one. 30th of June, 30th of June. Yeah, 30th of June. we did June. have an update in the last CE's report to make yes. sure it was in the, in the public arena. Excellent, thank so, yeah. you. Mm -hmm. But we are working through that process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Then we had a couple of questions from Councillor Duncan. Uh, the first one was with regards to Cage Road. Uh, the reply from the roading team is due to wet weather. They had some issues with the, the lays ca capturing some water and getting softer. So some of the equipment left, but they are back on site again now uh, to finish that up. Uh, Otara Bridge. So we've mentioned this earlier. Um, the due date is, the, is still next week, the 16th. Um, and no, no <laughs> regulations on the work so far. Uh, and then there was a last question with regards to compliance. Um, the question was, or let's say there was a comment in the report that under the new quality rules uh, that replace the old standards, um, there is no requirement for bacterial testing across the treatment plants itself. Uh, so I've done a bit of homework on that, and that is correct. Under the standards, uh, we were required to do testing on the raw water and then across the plant. Under the new quality, they're only concerned about what leaves the plant. Mm -hmm. So all our bacteriological testing is on the supply side rather than the raw water side. And that's the, the change. Uh, and then lastly, we had some questions from Councillor Delgidi. Um, the <coughs> she asked, what is the implications of possibly not meeting the December 24 deadline for the Martin water strategy? Um, and the reply to that is the only implications would be reputational damage. If we've put out to the community that that's the date and we can't achieve it, uh, it's reputational, but there will be no financial or other impacts. Um, and then the next question was, what does rehabilitation actually refer to? Uh, I've got a bit more detail in there, but really what it means is it's not just a reseal or a, or a light touch, uh, it's removal of a, of a top 100 or 150 mils and redoing that and then reseeding. So it's not quite a rebuild, but it's it's a little bit more mm -hmm. than just a reseed. And like I say, there's a bit more detail in the reply. Um, I it's just good. Yeah. yeah, just a question around that. I had a phone call this morning with somebody that came in and said, uh, essentially, because the Fern Flats Road, there was a significant rebuild of that road 18 months ago, two years ago. Um, is there a process around um, a period where they go back and check because the, the phone call was about you spend a lot of money on this road and it's uh, it's, it's showing rapid deterioration mm -hmm. I don't I haven't driven over it recently but this is a process where we go back after a period of almost like a warranty and check yeah, that's it. all the contracts have that. It's called the defects liability period. Um, I'm not sure in the maintenance contract what that is, but it's agreed up front. It's normally a year, normally, uh, but depends. If it's a maintenance contract, it could be it could be different. But there is a defects liability on all. So we'll have a look at that. You will have a look at that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next, let me just make a note. Next question was uh, also from Councillor Delgetti. Um, was regards to Natawa yeah, Road, so yeah. we've we've discussed oh, that. Uh, and then right. yeah. the last one was further to previous inquiry, uh, the parking behind Memorial Hall. If that will be sealed, the answer is yes, and it will be done in a heavy duty hot mix uh, that is uh, suitable for turning trucks and all the rest. So it won't be done uh, in anything that will be damaged by that. 
Um, so we have budget for stage two in this financial year, and then we have budget in the next financial year for the parking area behind behind Scottish Hall. So all of that will be done in this financial year, the next one, and the one after there's a clean up uh, budget in there as well. Thank you. Can I just ask, how extensive is that budget? We In this year, we've got $150,000. Next year, another 150, and then the year after that, uh, 160. Okay. Quite substantial, it should Half be sufficient. Dollars. Yeah, yeah. That, that's all non funded, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 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 So there's no, so, no subsidy on that. So those were all the questions. Thank you very much. And like I said, what I'll do after this, I'll send these out. It has a bit more detail, and you can have a look at those. With the, sorry, just to ask around this so that I understand it. So if we put half a million dollars into that over three years, um, that's non-funded, but not capital as a capex, as okay. a, regarded as capex and loan funded or is it operational? I, to be honest, I don't know the detail across that, I would suspect it's CapEx. We are creating a new asset uh, in the asset <coughs> value, and I suspect that it's CapEx. Mm. Thank you. Mm. All right, now we will go to the, uh, we'll go to the report and start with roading as we do. Um, and I think again, we'll just step through the different sections and see if there are any questions. The first section covers the, uh, the weather damage that we had over the last two years really, and are we progressing on that? Uh, I think the one of of interest, and I, and I have been trying to follow up to answer the question, is the Turkina Valley 2, I think, is the McClay's work. Uh, I'm just trying to confirm that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I was over, over that yesterday. Has um, work started then? They're, they're working on it now. So then, it, it, so... This is the Byfords contract, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So the uh, the update in the report is work has started, uh, and and I think uh, his worship is correct. And I think it is that one, but I am trying to confirm it. Sorry, sorry, just um, just following up from, if I may, um, Mr. Chairman, um, following up on the mayor's comments there. So, at what stage could we say, God, well? We've actually survived with that hall unsealed for how many years? Do we really want to do that at 500k? What is the process to suddenly question that that's, that's maybe not what we want to do? If, if I could just maybe um, clear up the question, it, it is sealed, that part of the road is sealed. Uh, there's a bit of a washout on the on the bend, and the and the issue really is. Oh, sorry, I'm back. I'm just going, going back. back. I'm still going. She's I'm going back to the wall. Oh, to the wall. Oh, 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 right. <laughs> I don't have my hand up, but um, <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't picked up. <laughs> well, that's a that's a great question. Uh, it it was, um, it was really council driven to do that and have that in the budgets just so we can seal it up. Um, been through a planning, long-term plan process. I I don't know. It's been on the books for a mm, long time. Yes. Um, to do that since really since I've been here, um, and right. we're just finally getting to it now. Right. So um. So yeah, the uh, what is the what is the process if we suddenly think that that probably isn't the best spend of money? Um. Absolutely. When you start to go into the LTP discussions, um, you could raise it then as a possible cost-saving issue. I have, I have questioned it myself, but I've questioned it around to say that this area is used as very tight turning circles for heavy truck and trailers, um, and that if you just put a chip seal on it, you'll rip it up. Um, but, yeah, I... It's a valid question to be asked when you start looking at financial impact. Thank you. The only, the only slight um, question that I'd have is 
usually some of these things are quite debated at the time, and therefore the public will have an expectation that that's going to happen. So normally, if you're talking of something of that, you would flag it as part of your discussion about taking that off, or so that the public were aware, mm -hmm. so that they could then make submissions on it. Because what you what you would then be doing is making a decision that may have been debated in a former and a um, earlier yeah. discussion, whether it was long term plan, annual plan, or part of your roading budget that that would be put in. And so, therefore, you would then be making a decision without giving the public the opportunity to comment or submit either way for uh, supporting the idea or against it. So, you are taking a bit of a leap against what you've already agreed to. Mm -hmm. That's a caution mm -hmm. from me on the table. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I agree with the chief executive. He's absolutely right. In the ideal world, we would have signalled it as a discussion. Um, however, it doesn't stop, doesn't stop the discussion being raised at the table. Yeah. Well, thank you. Councillor Moore? I'll just point out that over the last couple of council meetings, we have revoked decisions we've made in the last six months, so I don't see any reason why we can't revoke one that it was made no. for our time. No, you, no you're right, no, but you're generally... Generally, some of those uh, revocations are with um, process as, a, as opposed to a, a significant project that may have been through a discussion period that the community are thinking is going to happen. But you're right, at the end of the day, you are the decision makers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, just speaking to that, um, there's been such a lot of... Uh, uh, pushback at our rates increases. Um, I think if I think we should at least find out the reasons why we put that in. What 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 were the main reasons? Thank you. Gaylene, I think it's going to. I think I can answer that. I think it was done at the time when the playground mm -hmm. was put in because there used to be sealed car parking in that area. Mm -hmm. And so when um, the playground was put in, there was no access to that, and that's why I was determined to seal the other area for parking. So in effect, it was a mitigation of taking that land away. And so the reasons, was that the only reason? That, as far as I like, Is that, that parking, so I'd like to know, is that parking still really necessary? Um, is that the only area that the trucks use to turn around? Things like that. I just think it would be interesting to re revisit it. I, I absolutely agree that if there's an opportunity to say basically 2%, it's worth looking at. Yes, Councillor Wong? I, I mean, the suggestion would be that we make the decision to actually um, hold it for a year and then perhaps put it to a, uh, a annual plan um, public submissions for the next year because uh, um, that way we're making a decision but not a not a long term decision so if the public will was that they required it and we had the um, idea that we're looking for cost savings we're not going over their heads we're just delaying it that would be sort of mitigate uh, or satisfy both parties and yeah. Well, it certainly seems to be a feeling amongst the council we revisit it. So, um, I think I think that's a good suggestion. But I yeah. think what Councillor Duncan's saying is 100% right. You need to know the facts before, otherwise, we're putting you into a cauldron that you might not under you might not know yourself. Or we, I certainly don't. Um, what Gaylene's telling you is probably yeah. best information that we've got today. But we need to research that. Anything can come up as part of your long-term plan, um, but one of our roles is to point out where you might get tripped up and then you're making the decisions with the best information yeah. that you have. That's all we're doing. Councillor mm -hmm. Thank you. Just playing some of my naivety here around the space. Why are trucks going down there to turn around? Oh. <laughs> it's, not, it's just that the sharing sports, it's not a general tr truck access turnaround way. Yes, but at the shearing sports every year, the, the sheep come in okay. by a truck. Subsequent to that, um, has there been any um, understanding of the flooding down there? Because it backs onto the um, Pertinue stream and, and um, 
when I visited down there, I had a look in the Tetanus Dream and it was pretty blocked up at that point. Um, I should have put an IPS in, but um, the implications of spending all this money um, on sealing this and it flooding and destroying the car park. Again, through you, that yeah. may have been in the report. <laughs> we can, we couldn't say, I couldn't say off the top of my head. Well, yes, you wish it. Um, it. It is a valid discussion, but I would point out that in terms of you're looking at savings year one of rates, you won't achieve it because A, the work hasn't been done, and B, because um, the, the big cost for the CapEx program is a depreciation schedule, and that won't kick in until <coughs> a year's time. Um, but long term, the argument is absolutely valid. Um, in terms of flooding, the there's usually a very large ponding in um, the other side of the flats backing into Martin School. But it, and it does affect the low level of bridge area, but it's never tripped over into into the car park that I'm aware of uh, since you know pre. 2004, right through. So the actual sealed area has never been inundated, to my knowledge. So uh, to take this forward, we will bring it up as an item on for the, the discussion. Okay, right. Okay, yeah, right. Point, no. yeah, mm -hmm. no, good point. Right. So back to uh, Mackay's luck. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so I think what we can do with the roading one, uh, instead of going through all of those tables one by one to save some time, it's rather ask if you've got any questions on any of those jobs specifically that we can follow up on. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jill, oh, sorry, Councillor Duncan. All good. Um, thank you, Ms. Kennedy. I'm, I'm just um, interested because uh, Morfong Fongo Valley Road is my road. And we have got some quite significant work going on there. I note it's it's mentioned twice in your report. Um, as uh, page nineteen, uh, bridge guardrail. Um, but in actual fact, there's three big culverts being put in there. I'm just wondering where that's sort of referenced. Uh, once once again on page twenty. Um, it's also mentioned more from the Valley Road uh, underway. It says, um, what interests me about this report is that I know that work's going on. It's quite significant work, but it's not actually referenced. Is it, is that a concern for me? Uh, it's, a, it's a tricky question because it's the question of how much detail. Yes, yeah. So this is really just to give you a heads up of all the work across the but exactly what's rolled up in. So for instance, the second mention of it under resilience improvements could be the could be the culverts. Uh, so the question is really where do we stop? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So it, uh, it, is that a question, Councillor Lamb? Oh, it's just a comment. Oh, I'm, so, you know, I'm just saying there's a I'll just say there's a large number of completed projects here. Large percentage, thank you. Um, there are two general questions from me. Um, sitting in on um, the government's proposals around roading, they have been very specific around um, trying to get councils to understand what the traffic management costs are. Um, and when we enter these contracts, can we please have um, an indication of that? to take back, that's been a request through LGNZ and through the Minister. And secondly, um, a lot of this is low volume, low value work. Um, have we engaged with tier two, tier three contractors with some of this? And I do see loaders, for instance, as one which is great. Yeah. 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 yeah, so we have. Um, it was a bit of a catch up to Councillor Lowndes comment, a bit of a catch up this year. So we have gone out to the market for a lot of this work through second year mm -hmm. with local contractors. Yeah, thank you, and I appreciate that. Uh, right. Anything to keep us in 
Uh, not up to date with this. Well, there's none here in particular that you want to draw our attention to, William. No, so it's pretty much his day. No, yeah. <clears throat> Very good. Then we'll move on to the uh, compliance section of the report. Um, I think before we do, though, the, the one thing that is important, there was a specific question, is the timelines for the procurement process. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, and Councillor Wilson had a specific mm -hmm. interest in this too. Yeah. Uh, and you will see it's under, under Section 7 of the roading uh, we've added in there, and it's something that you can have a look at and keep an eye on. Um, things are aligned to comply with all those dates at the moment. It's, we're still online to achieve all of them. And you'll see also at the bottom end, we will be able to uh, we will be able to appoint a new contractor with more than sufficient time for them yeah. to um, to mobilise and establish and get going on the first of July, twenty twenty five. I think it would like uh, Councillor Wilson and I both agreed that these dates like should come before the council, so we know where. Yeah, um, I agree. With yeah, that. so it's just whether whether they're captured and um, reports for information. Or potentially we can leave it in there as a separate item. Yep. yep. Uh, so it's just a constant reminder of yep. where we are and that we are on time. No, that, that, that would be good. Yeah. So as I say, the, yeah. we're dealing with that many things, and as I say, they can be a dot in the distance and splatting on the one screen really quickly. If you don't. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yep. No, thank you. I think this three, Mr. Chairman. I think this one's significant enough to ensure a permanent space on mm. here. Good. Um, but we are trying to work out with the project management just how we report that because that was done in a form, as you know, with the coloured um, coding, yeah. but um, I'm just not sure whether that provides quite enough either. So that's something that we're trying to work on as to whether yeah. you have like a similar thing to this, but maybe 15 things that you identify so yeah. that you've actually got them there as an end yeah. item too. Yeah. But, um, but I think it's more... Um, emphasizing what what has always been done in your project management report so i think this one should stay, yeah. it's not, stay on its own merits mm. because of the significance mm -hmm. and um of oh, interest good. yeah uh, very good yep thank you very much so we'll move on to the um to the three waters uh compliance portion and start off with the drinking water uh firstly is the bacteriological testing uh, it is compliant across the network. What we do, though, is we do we do note all the rules and where we did not comply and the days on which we did not comply. The first portion is the bacteriological testing. The second portion is to do with the UV disinfection, which is notoriously difficult. And as I've mentioned before, if you miss a very short recording period, mm -hmm. So even if the equip equipment might still be working, you're not compliant for the rest of the year. So it is, it is strict. Um, and what we do with this report is just to be completely transparent as to what is going on so that you have a, a, an early heads up of exactly what's happening. So the water space is generally compliant, except for the UV on one of the plants on Hunterville. Yeah, on the 7th of March specifically. If we then move on to the wastewater uh, side of the business, uh, it makes for pretty sad reading. Um, yeah, it does. And it's it's a challenging environment for us at the moment. Um, what is in the planning going forwards is to get more expert advice on things that we can do on these plants to improve performance while we wait for the consent processes to continue. So most of these plants are operating on existing use rights and we have things in progress uh, that's taking time, but similar to what we've done now where we spend substantial amounts of money at Thai Happy to improve performance in the meantime, uh, yeah. to be more compliant or compliant more of the time. Uh, and hopefully that will start happening from the 1st of July that we would have more expertise coming in that will be able to advise us what we can do short term to improve the position. Um, yes, in terms of Thai Happy and Aluminium, I know that for the number of Rua Pehu consents, um, the composition of, of uh, groundwater and mineral con heavy metal content 
including aluminium, mm. has, has factored into the consent application. Mm. And I know that this has been raised with Horizons before, but they are unwilling to um, make a minor alteration on yep. the basis of that, is my understanding. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, His Worship is correct. That it's a it is a, a challenging environment because it depends on on what happens in the hearings uh, when you apply for consent uh, and where these limits then end up sitting. Uh, I think the challenge for us is as we go through the process of applying for new consents that are more appropriate, is to be sure that we have the right information and the right uh, expertise so that we can make the point in the hearings and be sure that we get the the correct outcomes mm -hmm. and the correct limits and things that we can actually achieve. Otherwise, you end up with a consent that's just you can't comply with. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the point that his mm -hmm. making. Yeah, but you'd think that there should be a process that you can subsequently go and say, look, um, both parties haven't realised this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? No. But why we have to continually yeah. fight this mm -hmm. sort of position is. That, so that's my point, Mike. You know, especially the aluminium, as I brought up before, my soil tests at my farm, some areas are really high. And yeah. there's aluminium, then there are hills. Yeah. And that should be part of the consent pro. You've got to make them realise where we take the water from. That, that's it. Well, so it's a wastewater discharge yeah. is the issue. So the aluminium is there, not that we've introduced it. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's just there. Yeah. 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 Councillor yeah. Algetti? Um, what's going through my mind is. Should we consider applying to central government for a fast track of some of these consents? <laughs> yes. No, <laughs> a very quick response here through you. The fast track provisions have been set up principally for GDP growth. Yeah. They're production based, and that is that is the driver of them, rather than a consenting yeah. program. I'd love to. We, we could set a precedent here. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chairman, just a question about it. Can you ask for a revisit of consent, a review in the process, uh, in the in the period that the consent is running? Yep. So the answer is yes, you can. Uh, and the best you can do in that space is they would agree that you can apply for a variation of a consent. But that, so we've tried that at both Taihepi and Huntable, uh, that is very complex because the moment they feel that the change of the limit will affect anything else, then right. it becomes a whole new application. So we made the point in Taihepi and Huntable that it's just a volume difference. Mm -hmm. um, there is not a difference in load or anything else, it's just volume. And the original idea was is if we could prove to them that that is the only parameter that's affected, then we can apply for a variation. But they became impossible. We just couldn't do it. Uh, mm -hmm. And after trying to prove that for more than two years, we reverted back to we're going to have to apply for yeah. a different seat. Yeah. So, so just, oh, sorry, just yeah. following up on that one, did, did the aluminium get raised in that? Because that's, that's a non-brainer as to why yeah. I've, I've raised it with it's horizons it. as well. And and they just didn't, wouldn't, didn't want to listen. But, yeah. Yeah. Just for clarification, so the, the consent that we have is with Horizons, who are also in charge of Ruapehu, and it's mm. part of the Ruapehu consent, but it, they won't allow it to be part of ours. Is that what you're saying? Yes. That's very interesting. Thank you. I, if, if I may, through you, Mr Chair, I, I do think it has a lot to do with what happens at the hearing and, and what scientific uh, information has been presented from, from our perspective. So. So potentially that was not as good as it could have been to make that point that there's already a high level of aluminium as a baseline in yeah. the stream. And if that wasn't done correctly or accurately or, or robustly enough, then mm. you would end up with a consent that's going to trip you. You should be aware that this isn't only an issue for our council. It's an issue for um, freshwater management of farms, for example. Mm. And it plays over, plays over into that field as well. And so um, a lot of that is up for review in Ooh. terms of the freshwater management. Right. Yes, we've got a, the uh, rank next week. The RRC, <laughs> RRCC's got a meeting in the Pugnui Hall with Minister Hoggard tomorrow, 11 o'clock, where things like this will be mentioned. Thank you. By someone in this room. <laughs>
Mr. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I may, uh, and all credit to to Crystal, she's done some homework in the background while we were talking, and she found the, some information on the Mount Cool questions. If that's of value to yeah. uh, to the room, um, apparently the original RFS was for a different location that's been resolved, um, and we've just spoken to the person that's done it, uh, that's put the RFS in. What the writing team said there, there are other dropouts, uh, either 800 meters from the original request and five kilometers from the original request. Uh, they were saying that the road surface is wide enough at these locations and because the repair cost is potentially very high, what they are doing for now within budget constraints is to keep or to monitor the condition uh, and to carry out remedial work in conjunction with other private work. It's kind of to manage the yeah. risk and yeah. the budget and all the other work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So that's the reply from them right now. What I will do is I'll add this to, to the email that will go out. So thank you to Crystal. No, 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 great. No, it's, unfortunately, it's going to, like I said, it's going to be an onward going. Yeah. And, and I think also what's interesting in this, uh, you can see the amount of information that we actually do hold mm. on all of these. And I think that's kind of the point that His Worship was making earlier. It would be good if, if there's an easy reference that you can cast your mind. Well, excellent. Thank you. So that's the information. Yes, I'll need a move for that. Oh, sorry, Councillor Wong. Just, question, um, just uh, to uh, asking of, of Mr. Kennedy to carry on my original question about the um, um, shared services. Um, we've got a good report about the um, uh, the status of the contracts for um, for roading, but is the process for in bringing in-house flow water um, management, is that all on track? Was there anything to report there? Just nothing we need to know about. Perhaps the best, best answer I can give to that is that we're working through it because um, remember at the moment shared services staff are remaining with um, Manor 2, so we're in that process as we speak. So within the next month, we will be able to report back on the totality of that. But it's on track working through, we're working hard. It's not, an, it's not, some of these things aren't that easy to work through, like as you can imagine. Right, thank you. Everyone happy with that? Brilliant, right. Uh, we'll have a mover that the report be received. Councillor Dalgetty, seconded Councillor Wong. All those in favour? Against? No, good, carried. Right, the PMO report. Rick on. That's um you. This, um, at this stage. Right, okay. So um, I'm happy to take any questions and take them back to the team if there's anything in particular, noting that um, I've only sort of taken over the responsibility for this team in the last four weeks. So um, I'm very happy to feedback anything. Perhaps I can raise because yeah. Peter's in the room too, so he might be able to help me on this. But Scott's Ferry, we are having another look at that, which will involve discussing it with um, a landowner and a community down there. And so we're just going through a number of different issues, just working our way to um, a different conclusion than what was initially anticipated when we actually get onto the ground. So um, Mayor Andy's involved in that as well, and we'll. We, we were working through a chain of a chain of um, different actions that we need to fulfill to get to an end result as quickly as we can. And just further to that update, an update on the Martin Office and Library project. So um, Ishwa has been pulling together a project work plan and he's presented that to the ELT meeting last week and got some feedback from us. Then we'll be bringing it to you at the council workshop on the 23rd of May for you to for him to explain the process with it to go through this pro um, project structure and all the intricacies of that project. So expect to see that. Um, we'll send it out prior to the workshop so you've got plenty of time to have a look at it. And then each one will be present at the workshop to go through it with him. Oh, good. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you wish it, yeah. Two from me. Um, First of all, in 4.2, Tai Happy Hautapu Bridges, 4.2.2 2 
read to say all work will be stopped um, because of the, the May deadline. However, uh, my understanding is that that relates to earthworks and contamination, potential contamination in the river. But for those people reading this report, they will think that all work has stopped. Um, but the, um, the actual construction of, uh, over water, I understand, can proceed. Well, that's certainly my understanding as well. Yeah, 100%. So it's just a minor point, yeah. but people reading this will think, oh, no. And the second one is um, I would like to see uh, the Puerto Rino be added back into the PMO office. There are, it appears, and there are questions raised around whether that project should have been ruled off or not. Yeah, so and I'll, until we get clarification, mm -hmm. it sits there, in my opinion. Through you, that yeah. is one that's um, on my on my radar, real, real, real on my radar, on my radar again, um, just to ensure that that is completed and um, does have formal sign off from Horizons, which is what we need. So, no, thank you. so I'm happy for that to be mm -hmm. back and uh, forward forward to the next meeting. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Councillor. You're getting to worry about the lack of questions on the seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, good, Councillor. I did have a hold on the questions on the water strategy, but yeah, it's still here. I think it's um, worthwhile waiting until that unfolds. Thank you. Um, the Taipei Town Hall, the update and the next steps doesn't sort of correlate with where, where we got to in the last meeting. Um, I can make a comment on that one. So there will be an update in the council agenda. At the moment, it's in public excluded. So we need to bring it through the proper process in the open part of the council meeting. So that'll happen there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I am happy to take some questions on that, Martin, if you want to. That will yeah. we'll help you if, if that helps. Yeah. Um, um, where are we at with that process um, with the Martin Wastewater Strategy? Can, through you, Mr Chair, I can give you an update there. Um, we are progressing work with the supplier of the new technology that we've chosen. Uh, so that'll be, it's a couple of things. The first one is there's a, an on-site <coughs> pilot plant that they've set up, and that will run and continuously be monitored so we can fine-tune the final design for the big plant. Um, we are working with uh, electricians. Um, there's another design company to do the supply. There's some work to be done on the bores and, and pump choices. Uh, so we're working through all of those, all of those factors, um, and it's all progressing well. In the background, also, there's the process to apply for the consent uh, across the two um, bores going forwards. So there's a lot happening in the space. Um, we've also commissioned a, a peer review on the on the pilot plant and results, as well as the design, the detailed design of the final plant. And sort of an overview of, of a pipe network once the water leaves the new wall. That's a, that's a, <laughs> this is a bigger picture yeah. as well. Yeah, that's right. So that is work that we haven't started on yet, but that we will. So we want to get a bit of a feel of what potential uh, unexpected consequences um, a water quality change would have on the network. Uh, so that work would start towards the second half of the year to try and figure that out. Yeah, just, just on that particular point, that's a really key point mm -hmm. for me as the managing the expectations of yeah. that day that it's switched over. Mm -hmm. So from that day, it is unlikely that the water will run crystally clear, which I think is some of the expectations out there. But um, to manage those expectations is something that we've got to have a yeah. good communication strategy mm -hmm. in place. Mm -hmm. And so we are working on that. And I, I know I know the council and myself would probably move, want that earlier rather than later, but the reality is that we've got to work through that process and um, some of the other priorities that we have at the moment are, are needing to get through. Um, but we are well aware that we need to understand what will happen on day one. 
um, and communicate that clearly so that the expectation um, or it might not meet what people currently yeah. think, yeah. Um, we will be able to manage that as best we can with, with the correct information. That, that certainly, uh, uh, Councillor Wilson's point too, is uh, comms are almost the, the most important thing of this whole strategy mm -hmm. is because he's, his feedback, as I've mentioned, a lot of Martin councillors would be the same, that they're under the impression that all of a sudden they're going to get champagne out of their taps sort of thing. So I think the really, most, really important, the most important thing is getting the actual yeah. plan right, but yeah. managing it is, yeah. a, is a key component. Yeah, exactly. I've been involved in a few projects elsewhere where sources in different locations have been brought online, and yeah, it's, very, it's an issue you want to really get some forward look at in terms of planning for flushing and all that sort of stuff, because moving sediments around that are in the network yeah, you can create water quality problems, which will um, pardon the pun dampen the enthusiasm of the community for a new water source. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's the last thing they want to think that's happening, that, that the water quality is crap. Mm -hmm. But it's actually the sediments in the pipe you want to deal with before you actually make the new bore source go live. Yeah, mm. that'd be my suggestion. And that's a planning thing that, you know, there's enough time to do that. Councillor sort of across that, so. Um, can I direct a question to Steve? Yeah, have, have you had a, um, a look at the new plant we're proposing down at the wastewater treatment plant? And sorry, um, wastewater, or? Uh, sorry, the freshwater uh, and water, um, because we've signed <laughs> off on a, 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 a process or a design or a you know that's going to deal with the water coming out of the bore. No, I just wonder if you've had a chance to have a look. He, Steve can answer on his own behalf, but just remember this is day two of Steve being here. <laughs> well, he's on the payroll, so I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> he's not on the payroll yet because we haven't oh. paid him. But going back to what <laughs> Councillor Loudon's asked too is remember we've got some peer reviewers doing that as well. So this would be a, like a second set of eyes that are new to us. So we are covering that in the, in the two. Um, I'm not taking. No, the tyres have been pumped. I don't, don't want the, his verdict yet. I just wondered if he's. Uh, if you'd asked me that question at five o'clock today, I would say yes. Yeah. Uh, it's not five o'clock yet, so. <laughs> no, I'll see you at five. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's just a matter of getting around the different people in the office as to where their projects are at at the moment, and that one hasn't hit the um, hit the you know haven't, haven't got to that one just yet. I do think there's two sets of eyes, which is what mm. councillors. Um, Loudon was at this, we have a peer review going on as well. Yeah. So, I've done quite a lot of work with um, water treatment strategies in new sources in big and small places around the North Island. So, yeah, I should be able to add, add a, a, an informed view as to, as yeah. to whether it's appropriate. Yeah. Steve, yeah. your worship? Um, yeah, just when we manage um, consumer expectations, we also need to point out that our network is part of the issue, there are private networks from from the road to yeah. supply. Mm -hmm. The number of times I've been to properties where they say our water pressure is rubbish, it's, it's crap, et cetera, and I say, what's it like next door? Well, this is much better than that. <laughs> yeah. um, so mm -hmm. it is an, an issue within the age of private pipes as well as the age of our infrastructure as well. But that's also good to yeah. communicate. You know, yeah, absolutely. If, if, that's, if there's that's an issue with pressure now, you, you might not see a change. Mm. It's, it's almost be a reminder, check your own. Oh, you, you, we could tie that in just to sort of kill two birds with one stone. Councillor Dagen. Well, actually, um, the mayor, that was the, the, the concern I had. Um, was, yeah. So there's not just the sediment, but the actual condition of the pipes. Well, pressure as and, well. Yeah. And and that some of that might be the private individual's issue. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Remember, your, your system, as I understand it, has fingers as opposed to a circular route. Yeah. So that's mm. more difficult to mm. manage than a circular system, which most have. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Particularly if a new source comes online, um, and there's different pressures. Yeah, you want to be careful about what that meaning for leakage yeah. and blow blowouts and stuff yeah. on old pipe networks. <laughs> and and the model is in order getting in water, isn't it? Yeah. And the model will be used. Hydraulic model will be used to um, assess yeah. some of those scenarios about pressure changes in pressure that people might experience in different parts yeah. of the, of the no, network. I just I just need to clear that up quickly. There won't be a change in pressure. All that's the same. It's the water quality 
inside the pipe that might change. Yeah. <clears throat> and when you play around with the water quality of the pipe, the character of the water changes. So it could be scale forming now and it might become a bit more corrosive as we go forward. Mm -hmm. So what we've seen in other places is some of the old buildup, some of that might become an issue. Yeah. Uh, pressure is not going to be the, okay. the driver, but, uh, yeah. but water quality will be the driver. So what Steve is saying, we need to get our minds across what that mm. might mean. And if there's any kind of mitigating actions we can take before that happens to make it better. But ultimately, his worship is right. If if we clean the pipes on the road, but your connection is still uh, it's got a hundred years worth of scale on the inside, that will be mm. something to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. PR campaigns you can wrap around those yeah. too. Yeah. That's, that's a key part of it. Yeah. Managing yeah. expectation. Exactly. Yeah. Very, very important, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you probably are aware it's a, a probably the uh, Martin central concern is the water quality. It's I I, yeah, I used when I first came here and I was amused by a smoko from the office up the road was um. Has anyone thought about how this water tastes? <laughs> that was I appreciate what you said about yeah. algae and all that sort of stuff. And, yeah. Uh, so I understand the mm -hmm. background backstory there. No, that, well, when, when you start meeting members of the public, that'll be their first question. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I mean, some people will look forward to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, 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 to not yeah. having that um, that taste, well, sure. yeah. Yeah. Been, particularly in summer, I understand it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I've got that familiarity. Soon, that's, no, all. No, that's all good. Uh, any further questions on the uh, PMO report? Oh, oh, that's sorry. <laughs> uh, just on the Martin Bulls wastewater, I just see in the update that the land purchase isn't been added into the update. Or is that no, still public? Has it happened? Or is that? No, well, technically, it's only just happened. So um, we, yeah, we need to manage that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know if the process has happened now. Um, I, I just have one quick question around the uh, route that is um, discharged to land. Like the chances of it being completed by the end of this year are not likely. So we haven't got a provisional date, but we still have to relies entirely on the consent process. Yeah. That's well, there, are, there are other things still happening in, in, yeah. in that as well, but yes, it's still in the consent process. Yeah. Mm. My, my eyes get automatically drawn towards the reading. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> but no, it's, it's all good. Any further questions? Oh, just sorry, Mr. Chair. No. <laughs> um, with things going across from um, into the public domain, I, I'm so, I'm sometimes sitting here thinking, was that in the public, uh, you know, part of our meeting or not? And I just get sometimes nervous about, you know, talking about some of that stuff. So, so yeah, I'm not sure how we can handle that, but I'm just. That I just want to bring to your attention that that's sometimes how I feel. So this is all in the public domain. For yeah. Sure, but so the previous um, question, question around around the um, wastewater, um, yeah, is is that in the public domain now or not? I don't know. Oh, only only because of timing. Right. Right. So, so do you so, so that'll come to that'll that should come to the council meeting as well. Mm. So some of the ones that come to council meeting will takes it out of public excluded and goes through in, mm. in a report as to where you are on that process. So some the, some is purely timing. Mm. Then I go to the buildings on the main street. Is that is that those discussions are not in public domain, are they? Yeah. We do an update every month in the CE's yeah. report about right. the status of those, yeah. um, and that's all in the public arena, and that's that's what's actually happening with those projects at the moment. So we're getting expressions of interest from the real estate companies. Um, we're waiting for the second or third one to come in, but each month we've got that as a standing item in the CE's report, so it's in the public arena. Thank you. It's usually where deals are uh, being done or there's private negotiations or negotiations or processes that are going um, and we can report on where they're at but we can't report on the detail sure. um, but that one I think is yeah. I don't think there's anything that's not in the yeah. public arena yeah but that's well, I, I sometimes get confused as to you know well, have we discussed where would where, where have we discussed that yeah it's not that easy yeah. 
remember if you only had one of these projects then that would be easy mm. that one would be, but when you're going through a number of them then um, I don't know whether we can help clarify yeah. that but, no. uh, yeah thank putting you yeah, but that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, a valid question. Uh, for instance, Bull's community committee last night raised the issue of, you know, we know that you've bought land um, and can you disclose it? Exactly? And I said, oh, sorry, you can't. Uh, and I said, this is a timing issue. Um, and whereas individual people may have approached us asking questions, no, we have to be very careful around how we can answer this. Oh, and remember too, there's that's other a classic from at the moment. And there's other complexities around that one because you can imagine that if you were purchasing a, a number of um, different um, farms or properties, they may all have different settlement dates too. So when you when you may be able to disclose one, you still can't disclose <laughs> a second. So mm. you know there's a whole range of complexities when you're buying bigger properties. If it's one, then it's more black and white, you know, that comes on. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, it's certainly unnerving when you're discussing with a member of the public, and it's almost if they sat in the public excluded meeting. So, yeah. yeah, well, they often know, they often know through the back door what's yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah. But no, it's too true. Okay, no, no further questions? That's good. Excellent. Brilliant. Good. Carol, you Okay, well, I'll move that the <coughs> project management office report be received. Councillor Duncan, seconded Councillor Loudon. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. No. Aye. Good. Aye. Aye. Thank you. That brings us to the end of the meeting. Thank you very much, people. And um, Karen, if you can roll the credits for the people online, that would be good. And um, uh, look forward to our next meeting, which is at whenever it is. Congratulations on your chair.